welcome to Empower and thank you so much for watching my channel and welcome to Anatomy 101. In this lesson, we're going to be going over the bones of the cranium. We will also do a brief introduction into the vertebral column. We will also go over the bones of the chest and more. So we have a lot to go over in this video and I can't wait. So let's get right into it. The axial skeleton is the part of the skeleton that includes the bones of the head and the trunk of the vertebrae. It consists of 80 bones. Its responsibilities include surface area for muscle and ligament attachment, protection of major organs, and framework support. These are the major functions of the axial skeleton. It is composed of the chest bone, the vertebral column, and the bones of the inner ear and the skull. Let's start with the uppermost part of the axial skeleton, the skull. One of the major bones of the axial skeleton is comprised of the cranium and the neocranium. These bones make up the skull and are all fused except the mandibular bones. Let's go over these bones in more detail. The neocranium consists of the frontal bone, which is the one that creates the forehead, and also a smaller portion of the nasal cavities and the orbits of the eye. The parietal bones, which are two in number, and when they articulate, they form the cranium's roof. The temporal bones, these are found on the sides of the skull and also the inner ear. They form a foramen that permits the jugular vein and the carotid artery to supply the brain with blood. The occipital bone, which precedes its name by composing the back of the cranium and also the floor of the cranium. It also allows the passage of the very important brain stem. The ethmoid bone also composes the cranial floor, a portion of the orbit of the eye, and it houses the ethmoid sinus. Another bone is the sphenoid bone that also houses the sinus cavity and has the cella ternica, which is a depression in which the pituitary gland is contained. The last of the cranial bone is the palatine bone that forms the root of the mouth and the posterior orbit of the eyes and also the nasal cavity walls. You can see this from all these different views. Bones of the face are also part of the skull, and the face is the one referred to as the splanchnal cranium. It consists of 14 bones. Each of the facial bones is in pairs of two that make up the two sides of the face. The vomer bone that is shaped triangular and is part of the nasal septum. The second bone is the lacrimal bone. Of all the facial bones, it is the smallest. The maxilla is the third bone and of all the facial bones, it is the largest, and it houses the teeth on the upper side. The inferior nasal conchae is another facial bone and forms the nasal cavity's lateral wall. The zygomatic bone is also a facial bone and is paired making the lower part of the eye's orbits and goes by the name cheekbone. The nasal bone is an additional facial bone, and the two pairs meet medially, creating a structure called the bridge of the nose. Another bone is the mandible bone, associated with the maxillary bone, and is essential for talking and eating. It houses the lower teeth, and it's the only flexible and mobile bone of the skull, through the temporal mandibular joint. The hyoid bone is the last facial bone, but it is found in the neck. This bone has no articulation, but rather it's held in place by the neck muscles. Remember, articulation means a joining of bones or cartilages. Bones of the chest are also part of the axial skeleton and include the clavicle, which is a long bone giving structural support to the shoulders and ribs. The 12 ribs are grouped into true and false, and the two of the seven false ribs are the floating ribs. They protect the chest and organs and aid in the process of respiration or breathing. They also include the sternum, which connects to the rib cage medially and is also called the breastbone. It has the manubrium, the siloid process, and also the body of the scapula, which is the last chest bone, and basically it is called the shoulder blade. It connects to the clavicle with the arm. The vertebral column is the last component of the axial skeleton, and it is divided into the cervical vertebrae, which is the first part of the vertebral column, and it consists of seven bones called vertebrae. The first two of these bones are called the axis and the atlas. They support the head. Thoracic vertebrae are the second vertebrae, and they represent the thoracic region of the chest. They are 12, and they support the thoracic cavity, the head, and they also house the nerves that innervate the upper region. 
The lumbar region forms the last major part of the column and is found on the lower section of the back. It is made up of the five vertebral bones linking with the sacrum and the coccyx with the pelvis. The sacrum is shaped into a triangular form and has five vertebrae that are fused. It joins the pelvis, the coccyx, and is the last part of the cervical vertebrae. It is also a triangle bone. It is made up of four vertebrae that are also fused. It acts as a shock absorber because it links to the sacrum via specific elastic cartilage. All right guys, I really hope you liked that video and I hope you learned a ton. Make sure you stay tuned because in the next video, we're going to have a very in-depth overview of the spinal column. We're also going to learn about the different curvatures in the spine and more. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Also, if you are studying anatomy and physiology, make sure you check out the membership section of this YouTube channel because I've uploaded my best-selling program, How to Study for Anatomy and Physiology, there. This program has been around for about six years now and it's helped thousands thousands of students go through and ace anatomy and physiology. All right guys, I can't wait to see you in the next video. See you then, bye.